The South Korean stock market's been seeing one big IPO after another. These new issues have been consistently oversubscribed by retail investors at a ratio of sometimes more than a thousand to one. More huge IPOs are just around the corner, one this Friday and another one next week, though some are calling into question whether valuations in some cases are way out of balance. For more on this, we have in the studio today our very own Om ji uh, Good to have you, ji Good afternoon. Well, as I was just saying, uh, we've, we've got another blockbuster IPO coming up in Korea uh, this Friday, August 6th, and that is Korea's only internet, internet-only bank, uh, Kakao Bank. And uh, it seems that bidding for these shares, like many others, is fierce, but, but not quite as much as before. Right. Many investors, uh, many investors race to get their hands on shares of Kakao Bank during the two-day subscription period last Monday and Tuesday, and some 1.9 million people bid for shares, and they poured in some 50 billion U.S. dollars into retail orders. Submitted orders came to around 183 times the amount of stocks made available. I deposited 100 million won because the company looked promising. When Kakao Bank first opened, it drew lots of attention. And I believe the number of accounts is currently the largest among local mobile banks. Although the competition was high, the response it got from retail investors was not as hot as previous IPOs. The amount of subscription deposits made was the fifth largest for a local IPO, but was far less than those of other big-name companies that went public earlier this year, including SKI Technology and SK Bioscience. Kakao Bank has priced some 65.45 million new shares at around 34 U.S. dollars each. That is at the high end of its proposed price range for its initial public offering. But th- well, ji as according to the valuation as you just described it, uh, you know, this has led to some controversy because that would make it one of Korea's biggest financial institutions, even though Kakao Bank, uh, by definition, has no brick-and-mortar stores. Oh, that's right, Devin. Some say that uh, IPO price of Kakao Bank is overvalued. That's because a relatively small venture in terms of asset size and earnings would become one of the largest financial institutions in the country right after listing. Experts say as the price is overvalued, Kakao Bank is unlikely to see the dramatic price rises that previous IPOs saw in the first days on the Kospi. Since last year, there was a high demand in shares for IPOs and record high deposits were gathered. This triggered companies going public to set the IPO price aggressively. This time, the market is expected to be colder than before. Although there is high chance that the opening price will be higher than the IPO price, it is unlikely that it will lead to a dramatic price jump. Controversy over the IPO price is also the case for one of South Korea's biggest game makers, Crafton. The two-day public subscription for the game developer behind Global Blockbuster, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, ended yesterday, but the sales of shares were rather disappointing. Orders came to merely eight times the amount of shares made available, significantly lower than Kakao Bank, which had 183 orders per share, or Kakao Games with 1,525 orders per share. Also, deposits taken for Craft On amounted to only about $4.4 billion. I didn't participate in the subscription for Crafton because of the relatively low competition rate among institutional investors. Also, I thought the IPO price is much higher than its truth worth. Ahead of its debut on the benchmark Kospi next Tuesday, Crafton has priced some 5.6 million new shares at 498,001, or around 432 U.S. dollars each. Some critics say the shares are overpriced because they put Crafton's valuation at around 21 billion dollars, which is more than NCSoft, the biggest game developer listed in South Korea. The biggest reason for the overvaluation is that 90 percent of its sales are coming from only one game, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. I encourage people to sell the shares as soon as the market starts on the first day of going public because the price is overvalued. 
So, Jiang, while demand is still uh, quite high, though maybe not as high for some of the newer IPOs, um, we haven't seen the kind of crowds going to the brokerage houses to try and, and get shares uh, as we were seeing before. Most of the transactions are being done online. That's right. Following the application of level four social distancing measures in the capital area, um, some brokerage houses limited the number of customers that can enter. This is unlike the IPOs of SK Bioscience and others when brokerages had people lining up to make accounts so they could join in the frenzy. A branch manager of a securities brokerage house says about 70% of bids are being made online. The number of customers who are actually visiting has decreased compared to the past. This is due to the pandemic, as well as retail investors not being able to submit multiple applications at different brokerage houses, unlike past subscriptions. So, Jiang, you've told us about a few IPOs, uh, Kakao Bank, Crafton, uh, and a few others. What are some other IPOs coming up in the near future? Um, one of the companies that's receiving a lot of attention is Kakao Pay, South Korea's largest online payment service with 36 million users. It was originally set to start its public subscription today, but was delayed after the financial watchdog demanded that it corrected it, its filing and revised subscription price ranges. Um, it plans to go public in the second half of this year. Kakao Mobility, the transportation services unit of Korea's dominant chat app operator Kakao, also plans to go public within months. One of the most anticipated mega IPOs would be LG Energy Solution, a spin-off from LG Chem. As the electric car market is growing, the battery market will also expand. He also mentioned some other IT companies that are now trading over the counter but will go public soon. Those include e-commerce platform Market Curly, online fashion shop Mushinsa, the accommodation booking platform Yanulja, and Viva Republica, which runs Korea's largest fintech startup Toss. Shares of these companies are unlisted, but they've been rising in price with IPOs expected in the next year or so. Well, ji will be watching that. And, of course, we don't give financial advice on this program, but I think your reporting today will at least help people uh, think about some of these things as they decide what to do in this market. Thank you for your thorough reporting today. Thank you for having me.